tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed, and a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to tinfoil hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Paul Hat. You know I am, you know him. I'm here to do, I'm here to. Rawr! Join me as always, Xavier Guerrero, and on the ones and twos, Jay Nice, Juicy Johnny, Johnny Woodard. Hey. Hey. Guys, we have a great show for you. We have the one and only the prophet Eddie Bravo in to do a show, talk to you guys. Also, to tell you about our upcoming date, we have this weekend, we have Indianapolis and St. Louis, the Tim Foley Comedy Night. Go to samtriplet.com, see Eddie Bravo, see Xavier Guerrero, see myself, drop the hammer of the God stand-up show, and then we do Swarm Tank in it to win it. Then I'm in Bellflower on the 10th, Comedy Store on the 14th. That show's coming together. And guys, Austin, Texas on November 17th, and we're going to be in Dallas. Grab your tickets. Uh, seven Dallas, guess what? Oh, we're actually in Plano. Guess what, guys? There's no Cowboy game, so grab your tickets <laughs> on the 19th for the 7 o'clock stamp show, and then on the uh, for 9 p.m. Swarm Tank. Anything else, guys? That's it. I think we're ready to go. Check All out right, broken, get into it. Sim, Let's get new in. Broken Sim, check it out. Oh, New Broken right Sim, check out. Go, go check out. Go uh, samtribute.com for all that. And let's get in it with Eddie Bravo. All right, let's get into it. Very excited to have him back. He's the prophet. Eddie Bravo. How are you, Eddie? I'm doing great, man. <laughs> How about that guy getting killed in hockey? Dude, that's oh. crazy. Johnny won't watch that video. No, I'm not I cannot watching. believe they're not going to charge that guy. I dude, mean, I, dude, saw, I saw the blood. I saw he he was still standing and yet he was just covered in blood. That's all I could watch too. I'm not trying to watch the whole thing. No, I don't the whole need, thing I don't need any more people off, dying bleeding. in my brain. Yeah, I mean it's it's tragic and they, it's like is there a good video of it? Like a good yeah. have you seen good video of it? No, like you, you've happening? seen it. It's only one video. There's not another angle, is there? No, but you can obviously. I did the whole zoom back, forward, rewind, slow motion. It, there's if you zoom in, it's tough. It's but like I, this I, Zapruder I, film. So I, funny. I, yeah, exactly. But I don't think it was intentional. You think there was a chance he did it? What? On, they said there was a dirty player, but I don't think he was trying to kill him. Xavier, the guy goes into him, and then at the last second, karate kicks him in the neck with a blade. So it should never be mass slaughter. So it should be mass slaughter. in hockey? No I, no, I mean, like, I, I think we would know if it happened. Happy, happy you... Gilmore. I remember Happy Gilmore. He said, I, I was the only guy who took off his skate and tried to stab somebody. That's... Yeah, I mean, like. We have I a mean, second. The NHL players are, are going nuts right now. This guy played the NHL. He was, like, doing some. And he just got karate kicked to the neck with a, a, a ice skate blade. Is there anybody out there? You know, there the guys out there that. that um Anything that happens like that or anything, it's, it's like there's gematria, there's the Yeah, I'm sure happens. there's something on that. <laughs> the score, the I'm score. I'm sure there's the something time. on that. <laughs> you I'm know what's sure. crazy, though, is that George Bush shit. What, him, no, him that's pitching? the craziest That's story. crazy, right? Before we get into that, I want to be like, Eddie, are you excited for this weekend? Are you excited for well, Texas? What's on this weekend, Sam? We got a big shows coming up. We're doing uh, Indianapolis on November 3rd, and then we're doing... Uh, we're doing St. Louis on November 4th. Okay. You got That's your candy. Weekend? What? That's this weekend? Yeah. Yes. How come you didn't tell me? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm telling you now. I bought you tickets, dog. You're ready so, to go. So Indianapolis Friday, St. Louis Saturday. Yep. Grab your oh tickets, dude. I got to come up with some fucking conspiracy jokes, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do. I do. By the way, Eddie, I'm about to shoot a new special and then probably. 
January, I think I'm going to shoot it. I think it's too late to do it this year. People are going to start saving money for Christmas gifts because I want people to fly out for it. And then, Eddie, wait till you see my new act. It's just going to be like, what's up with having kids? That's going to be my new comedy. It's going to be all mainstream stupid. Wait, wait a minute though. When are we when are we going to Dallas and Austin though? Isn't that so then? Soon? Then we're okay. So we're November third and fourth. We're we're in Indianapolis and St. Louis. Then blessings. We are in Dallas. Well, this is Austin on the seventeenth. That show's almost sold out. And then we're in Plano, Texas. I should say Plano, Texas, at the House of Comedy. Uh, and that is November nineteenth. We have a seven p.m. stand-up comedy show, and then a nine p.m. Uh, swarm tank so you can come and get some it's been a while since we've been in uh the dallas area it's been a couple for those years that don't, for those that don't know what's the difference between the tinfoil hat comedy show the regular one and swarm tank what's the so difference? stand up so uh the first show is stand-up comedy where we do our well-crafted multi-layered dick jokes okay and then the second show is uh us answering any q a anybody's got to ask okay yeah, so that's it, dude. Go check it out. More and more shows coming. Just go samtribly.com. I'm very excited, dude. Life is very good, dude. I can't complain. Um, okay, now, so, now back to that George W. Bush pitching. Okay. Explain so, that shit, because that's that shit's crazy. Have you seen that? So George Bush, the last time George Bush threw out the opening pitch of a World Series was the World Series after 9-11. Like then, a, month, a month later, like a month and a half yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, 9-11 happens. He comes out, he throws it. And that was Yankees versus Diamondbacks. Now, here's the – okay, remember Diamondbacks, okay? So then this year he throws it out. It is Rangers versus Diamondbacks this time. And this is the 119th World Series. That's 9-11 backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. The first game, the tying run is hit in the ninth by the Rangers. Then the winning run is hit in the 11th. Okay. That's All crazy. Right. That's crazy. I don't know how I don't know how they they, you know, if this is like some Freemason shit. Um, I don't know. People, people, I mean, are talking about sports being rigged. A lot lately, a lot. And baseball, I don't know how you. Well, it is it. a Freemason sport. It was yeah. made in the Freemason. If you study the diamond, it is the Freemason symbol. And then another thing about this World Series is, uh, I don't know shit about the thirty third parallel, but apparently there's a line, a third, like like in a map, the thirty. Both of these parallel. teams are on the thirty third parallel. Yeah, crazy, right? That is so <laughs> crazy, bro. That's so crazy. Now, here's the thing is both of these World Series have what team in it? The Diamondbacks. What are Diamondbacks? Snakes. What are snakes? Serpents. Damn. Yeah. If if baseball's rigged, how would they rig it? I, I, I'm pretty sure um the rigging in the NFL is just you just you just take uh, you know, corrupt umpires because Basically, in football, you can call a flag on every play. Yeah, every play there's holding every yeah. fucking play. So yeah. they don't call it on every play; they just call it sometimes. 100%. You know what I mean? So that, that's easily rigged. Like football is easy. All you got to do is get to the umpires. I don't believe the players are in on it at all. I don't believe that at all. It's just no way. Yeah. Um, I don't believe quarterback. And how, why wouldn't one of them come out? Why what? wouldn't one of them come out? There's no way every single, every single player has been treated so well that yeah. they won't yeah. come out and say, "Dude, yeah, they right. told me to do this." Yeah, now, one, yeah, one, one, one of like these one guys guy. that has got CTE from you know the '80s, who who yeah. uh, they're not giving, they're not paying for his health care anymore. Yeah, they would come out for sure. Yeah, and and like Larry Johnson would be the first one to talk about that shit. You know yeah, what I mean? right, right, yeah. right, right, right. The running back. Yeah, he's got no for fear. sure. So 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 now <laughs> baseball. I mean, it's got to be the umps, right? Like, how could they do it? It's easy in football because there's penalties all the time, and they only call them when they when they want to, really. And uh, there's pass interference on every fucking play. There's pass interference on <laughs> holding, every fucking yeah. play. And holding on every play. They don't call it all the time. They only call it in certain times. 
So that's e- football can be easily rigged that way. You don't need to involve the players. That, that's ba- basketball, baseball, too. What was that? Basketball, too. You know, Same if you want thing. Basketball, there's fouls everywhere. Yeah. All the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. we so know they've done do it, they in do it in basketball. basketball though? I mean, how do they do it in baseball? I mean, there's strikes and there's strikes and balls. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there was you a, could see it. You could see that. If you could there was it one so play fun. that in, in the World Series that was so obvious that the guy it was a foul, and they called it in. They called it like it was in, and it was so it was so blatant. They had to go to instant replay to overturn it. Either, the, but that's about it. I here's mean, how you fix baseball: is with the baseball, dead baseball, uh, live. Wasn't baseball. that last year that's they found that the Yankees? Think about what does that mean? Can, what think, what about does that mean? Can, yeah. think about who controls the balls. The umpire puts the ball in play, takes balls out of play. You got the dead balls in one uh, pocket, the live so, balls so in another pocket. So if they want a pocket. certain team to win, they do, they play when they're batting. They give them the live balls. Yeah, absolutely. Here's yeah. a crazy question that someone needs to ask: How many refs or umps? Are Freemasons? Ooh, That's a good question. Yeah. You know, I had I had Hector Lombard. He's a UFC legend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. I had him on my podcast, and you know what he was saying about Freemasons? He's like, dude, they got it all figured out. I want to join the Freemasons. I want to be a Freemason. These fucking sheep. These guys are fucking idiots. Regular peasants are idiots. The Freemasons have all the knowledge. I want to join the Freemason. And it's you know what? Super I, interesting. Yeah, and a guy came up to me in my New York City seminar. He came up, just a regular dude. He looked like he was 27. Just a regular, he didn't look like, just like a kid. He was, to me, he was a kid. He's like, hey, dude, if you want to, if you're interested in, in joining the Freemasons, you know, let me know. We'll, we'll welcome you in. And I was like, whoa, I go, that sounds dangerous. No, thank you. <laughs> but, well, you remember they yeah. did that to us in San Francisco. You remember that? Where the guy weighed in line and he showed us his ring. He's like, we would like to show you our lodge. I was like, whoa, bro, we're good. We're yeah. good. <laughs> but isn't it crazy that Hector Lombard, he's like, fuck it. I, those guys, I want to be with those guys. Those guys have all the knowledge. You know, they're uh, they're running shit. They know everything. I want to join them. I'm like, holy see, shit. I see like Freemasons are like, like any group. It's like most of the people probably don't really have a clue what the fuck's going on. They're just yeah. practicing. My and then uncle's you have... a Shriner. He doesn't know shit, dude. He <laughs> yeah, doesn't know dude. a damn thing. Yeah. I'm telling you, bro. They're j- it's just like community, and then there's just those dark arts motherfuckers. That's my yeah, opinion. It, it's, it's obvious. Like, you can't, you know, any corporation, they're not going to tell, like, like for instance, um, like at, at my gym, right? We have like the front desk people that don't know everything that's going on at the very top of ten. I couldn't level. agree more, bro. I couldn't agree more. It's like certain a certain uh what would you say? People who worked at the standard hotel, maybe out front, you yeah, know, exactly. <laughs> bar, <laughs> stuff like that. that was really rude, Johnny. That was really rude. So I used to work at the standard hotel, Eddie. And so whenever when I first started doing my podcast. They would learn that fact that I used to work at, and then they were all convinced that I was part of the secret uh, so just fucking parties. And it was so hilarious because I'm like, listen, do you know how you keep secret parties secret? You don't tell the stand up comic that plays the main room at the comedy club down the street. <laughs> you don't invite him to, you don't invite the grunts there. That's how it, that's how the secret gets out, you dumb fucks. I mean, it's just so stupid. But, I do believe in compartmentalizing uh, a lot of these, these organizations. And, you know, well, when you, every, everybody does. Compartmentalizing I, mean, like I, I argue with Brian Kell about that. Do. It's why there are so many takes yeah. on what happened to yeah. Kennedy, because I think that there were several different groups that were assigned to kill him that day. And that that's I, why you have like, Oh, it was the mob. And, it, you know, I, I think that. Was, dude, have, you, have you heard, have you heard the conspiracy theory of, that, um, this the Zapruder film is to was done with Anthony Zapruder, whatever the fuck his name is, thirty three degree Mason. Yeah, the video and came it, out ten years after. Yeah, movie, there, yeah. there's a conspiracy theory that it's a fake movie. There's a guy saying that he's an expert in that, not an expert, but what he does is he says that that purple shit that, that blows off his head. He goes, "That's movie shit." It's, it's squid, the, right? It's they say squid. squid. Yeah. yeah, we've had that. Said, ga- we've had that guy on. Oh. 
anybody in the movie business goes, anybody in the movie business, he dude, there's videos with this guy. He goes, dude, that's a squib or squid with a squid, yeah, squid, squid. yeah. It's J- yeah, the said, movie's called JFK X. The whole thing is fake. He's saying J- JFK, they faked his death. That's what he's saying. He's saying I, that I, just, the I don't get why they, they would killed, do that. You know the cop, the cop that was killed. You know the cop, the cop that was killed. Yeah. yeah. The same day, you know, there was a cop that was killed the same day. You know what his nickname yeah. was? JFK. JFK. Yeah. 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 You know why? Yeah. Yeah. He looked just like him. Yeah. They're saying that they used that body, like that body was the one that they. That it wasn't JFK. Like this guy's saying he probably faked his own death because that video is fake. He's saying the video is fake. It, it, the frames were removed. He said the frame, because everybody knows frames were removed, but he's saying frames were removed. You could tell which frames were removed. He's saying because uh in those frames, you could totally tell it was like he wasn't reacting right, like to the squib or something. So they had to remove some frames. Hmm. He's saying it was yes. all bullshit. He goes, look at look at when they're shooting. When they're shooting. Like Zapruder didn't freak the fuck out and he's right there on the grassy knoll. The camera didn't fucking move. There's all these shots going off. When all these shots go off, people freak the fuck out. He it's steady as fuck. Mm. And the people in the background goes, look at the people in the background. They're big. They're bigger than the guys in the car. The people in the background are bigger than the guys in the car. They should be smaller because they're further away. Because that's a fake movie. Yeah, and Zapruder there's some interesting amazing. stuff that's come out Zapruder's about that as well. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, and have you ever Crazy seen the shit, guy right? that broke down? And then down? you look at Jimmy. They... Have you seen the guy that broke down who the babushka lady was? Yeah, and then you... Have yeah. you seen that video? Yeah, and he, he basically call, basically puts it that it's uh, this Rothschild, one of the head yeah. of the Rothschild family. And, she, and he names every guy standing around her is a CIA a- agent protecting her. Like she was literally just there with with her babushka watching the whole thing happen. And th- there's some things in that movie that really resonate with me. And the one thing that resonates is like if you watch JFK leave, leave the plane versus when he gets quote unquote shot. Right. If you watch that, like when he gets off the plane, he's like the Beatles, man. They are going nuts for him. And then yeah. at the moment he gets shot, there's nobody in the background. It's just completely yes. empty. Totally, totally. Seems like it was fake. I, I, I'm thinking it was fake, man. And you know what? It, you know what? It, it just makes that conspiracy theory stronger. The one that he it, he became uh, uh, Jimmy Carter. <laughs> Have you seen that one? <laughs> I love that one. Jimmy that Carter, really? Jimmy wow. Carter, I go, that looks... Well, when you look at the that, head wound of JFK, it does not l- fit. What looks like the trauma of the shot. Well, if you read the, have you read the autopsy though? The autopsy, the guys there say the whole, they, they started working on him. They were like, oh, he might be able to survive. And then one of the guys walks in and is like, puts his hand under the bottom of the head where the part you can't see. And he's like, oh guys, nah, uh, his entire bottom of his skull is gone. We're, this is over. Uh, his brain is like just half eroded, you know, just exploded out of his head. That's that's what if you read the autopsy, that's what they say. Like that, there was just the back of it that you couldn't see immediately is what's missing. But who's, the thing who, I don't know the JFK X thing doesn't stand up. Why would he fake? Why would he, what? Why do you think he would fake his death? That's the part I didn't quite because get. Because they all wanted to kill him. Yeah, but, but but I mean, they killed his brother. What his brother that he just let his brother dangle? I mean, like, I don't I don't know about that. It's weird. Or maybe maybe he maybe he didn't. Maybe they did kill him. But they didn't have the video, and then they made a video to for another reason, like to get everyone yeah. running, you know, and wild beast yeah. chases and shit. Because it came out ten years later, dog. Yeah, it wasn't like the video That's came out really a week later. weird. And it the way it got released, like Dick years. Gregory, you know, Dick Gregory, you know, yeah, uh, and oh, Geraldo, and, uh, Reno- Geraldo, Geraldo yeah. Rivera. Yeah, come on, come on! It weird. came out ten years later. And it's on the Geraldo Rivera show. Yeah, I don't know about so that weird, one, dude. And the dude's a Freemason, Zapruder. I don't know, man. I, I'm that, just that starting to think everything is a just a intelligence trick. That's all it is. Just a giant it intelligence seems like trick. Just, it, it seems, doesn't it seem like it? Hey, guys, real quick, I want to tell you about our friends at 
Babbel, that's right. If you want to learn a language, there's no better place than Babbel. Let me tell you about Babbel. Listen, do you want to speak a new language? Babbel is perfect for that. This fall, you can start speaking a new language with Babbel. Why Babbel? Because it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are a little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you speak a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools are for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real-life situations, and delivered with conversational-based teaching. I want to learn Spanish and Armenian. What do you guys, what do you want to learn? We already, we actually use Babbel. It's, we, use, we are looking and uh, doing Spanish right now. I'm going Portuguese. Whoa, Brazilian. Bro, I want to, I, I like the big booty Brazilian. Yeah, so you're going to go down there. You're going to be like, Little look soccer. at me. I could speak Spanish to you, but I'm going to speak in your native tongue. Exactly. Oh. Portuguese is where it's at. I'm in, dude. I'm in. I should call you up when I'm trying to learn Spanish and try to talk to you in Spanish. Oh, I got you. I should do that one time. Cuando Just keep tú it real. Cuando yeah. tú quieras. We'll keep it real simple. <laughs> Five-minute conversations. Okay. So here's what's going to happen, guys. Okay. Here's what we need you to do. I want you to know the studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove Babbel is better. For instance, one study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. With over 10 million subscriptions sold, Babbel's real language learning for real conversations. So here's what's special, okay? For a limited time, a limited deal for our listeners to get you started right now, get 55% off Babbel subscriptions, okay? But for only our listeners, go to babbel.com slash tinfoil. That's right, just for our listeners, babbel.com slash tinfoil. Get 55% off babbel.com slash tinfoil, spelled B A B B E L dot com slash Tim Foyle. Rules and restrictions may apply. Mi amigo. You know, I'm down for Trump. You know, if I voted, I would vote for Trump. Um, I think uh, I like what Trump's saying, you know, MAGA. I like uh, uh, America first policies. Everything like makes sense. You know, he's. Make get out of that fucking Paris Accord. Yes, climate change is a fucking hoax. Figure that shit out, please. It's so obvious. Um, look at all the demons who are pushing it. You think they give a fuck about CO two? Those motherfuckers just want to control everybody. It's so obvious. So uh, Trump uh, thinking uh, or saying climate change is a hoax. I like that. I like uh, secure borders. It's a no brainer. Yes, we want to let. Uh, uh, good people in, hardworking people, but we gotta vet them, you dumb fucks. We gotta <laughs> vet them. We gotta vet them. Yeah. Everybody agrees with secure secure borders. Everybody, it's a no brainer. You can't just let like what's happening now and just everyone just flood in. You, and it's not it's not Mexicans. It's fucking everyone from all over the world. It's Chinese. It's Middle Eastern. It's African. It's fucking Guatemalan. Yeah, it's fucking dude. Venezuelan. It's yep. fucking. Koreans and shit. It's everybody. It's not just Mexicans. What do we do with the coyotes? You know what's funny with the coyotes? Because <laughs> it used to be that you pay the coyotes uh, to get you across, right? And now it's now you you pay the coyotes to get you busted. What do you mean? They're there to get busted because when they get busted and processed, they get a phone, they get a plane ticket anywhere they want to go, they get yeah. processed, and then they get fucking a, a, a debit card with twelve hundred dollars. No you know? shit, you didn't know that, bro. No, I'm dude. telling you, dude. And we pay, we pay for it. Oh no, that's Eddie, true. I, I know border patrol. That's crazy. They tell me, it's, Eddie. Yeah. my buddy. I'm not gonna say his name because yeah. I don't want to trace that. He, he, he told me this. He, he'll know it's him when I'm talking about it, but he was telling me that his friend is working in like construction or something like that, and he's getting paid by the government to give these guys jobs. And like the list of things that he has to do, he has to make sure their dietary needs are right. Like this whole thing about hiring these illegal, it is crazy to me. So when I, I look at this, I go, bro, this is this is this is not just illegals. 
these guys are on the payroll. This is what you yeah. do when you go somewhere. Like when you would do a UFC fight somewhere, they would give you a per diem, a hotel room, take care of you, all this stuff. That's what's going on right now. And yeah, and we're we're paying for it. We're yeah. paying for it. It isn't like yeah. it's coming out of like uh, the Congress budget. We're paying yeah. for that shit. You know when I, you know when when people sue like the D, like right now Cash Patel, he's suing the Department of Justice for spying on him uh during the you know the first couple years of uh the trump administration yeah and i'm like when you sue the doj or you sue the pentagon who fucking pays for it it's still the taxpayers right yeah yeah like or unless it comes out of like their budget then it then it hurts them like the, maybe the doj gets like i don't know it i wouldn't doubt if they got billions a year you know what i mean but if it comes out of that budget directly, then I can see how it hurts like the DOJ because they they they, they want to steal that money. You know what I mean? Yeah. But or launder it or whatever. But when if it's um just taken out of tax, like a like tax money, like who like why um that's not gonna hurt the government. They're, they don't give a shit. They're like, you guys are paying for that shit anyways. They can care less if they get sued. 100 percent that's that's the whole thing so i'm watching this video the other day uh eddie and it's a video where you know it's one of these man on the street things and it's like the man on the streets now are either interviewing hot young chicks and they're giving up their body count and you're like <laughs> what are you doing or or it's like let's interview uh, a, a, a fat americans and find out how stupid they are and so it was one of those, let's find out how stupid they are. Now, you know, he, he interviews a bunch of people who get the answers right, but that doesn't work for his video. So he edits down that people are dumb and I, there's probably more people dumb than smart, but I do believe in my heart of hearts that this is uh, the dumbing down of America. You know, you have like Oregon now going, Hey man, we're not going to teach reading, writing and math anymore because we find it racist, which is absolutely hilarious. Yeah. The truth of the matter is, is that they want you so dumb that you cannot figure out what your government is actually doing. And what your government is actually doing is using the Federal Reserve, the U.S. Federal Reserve, centralized bank, to bankroll the world military industrial complex and then using our children as stormtroopers for that. So... You know, when you have Jimmy Carr going on uh, on door door um, Joe Rogan's podcast talking about how like the, the the you know the the Roman Empire just you know didn't die just rebranded itself as a um, as the Catholic Church, which we've been saying here forever, and then about how you know the Bank of uh, you know the British Empire didn't crash and burn it actually just rebranded itself as the Bank of England which we've been saying here forever uh and it is of my belief that the Nazis didn't lose World War II Germany did and they rebranded themselves the World Intelligence Agencies we've been saying this here forever and this is what's happening the three brands uh, that you control people with which is money, religion, and the military, they've all just rebranded themselves into those things. And that's where we are right now. So when you bring up, you know, our taxpayer money or stuff like that, I honestly don't even believe it's the taxpayer money. It's really just we're paying now, we're paying off the interest on this money that the Federal Reserve is printing and just handing it to the military industrial complex. So when everyone's like, oh, dude, all this aid's going to Ukraine, it's not going to the Ukraine. Most of it's not. Most of it's just going to Boeing and Raytheon and all. And then, and then yeah. some money goes to the Ukraine so that they can divvy it all up and keep begging for more money so that our government can just take more money out and just give it to Raytheon and Boeing and all these other things. So, like, that's what's going on. Uh, they have used our Federal Reserve, our centralized bank, to bankroll the death machine. Did you hear about that announcement that the Pentagon made that they got a new nuclear bomb that's Oh, 24... this is my favorite thing. This it's is 24... my favorite thing. What is this? It's, tw it's 24 the gravity times, bombs. 24 times more powerful than the bomb they dropped on Hiroshima. Do we need that? 
Like, <laughs> was anybody asking for a 24X Hiroshima bomb? What the fuck? No, but you know what? You know what? Nobody Scary. asked for it, but uh, we we, uh, we needed a reason or they needed a reason to get that money. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're like, dude, hey, we can, we're going to make this bomb that's 24 times stronger than the atomic bomb from 1945. But we're gonna need, you know, is it nuclear? Trillion. It's a couple trillion. It's a. Now. It's called a gravity bomb. But it's not yeah. nuclear. And so, how do we? How do we know it's twenty five times more powerful? Like how? Because do we, they how told do they us, X G. Exactly. They, they would lie to us. us. Yeah, yeah, they just told us. I never said that. Scientists said that. Scientists. Scientists. <laughs> it's a nuclear that. gravity bomb is what it's called. Okay. And yeah. j- can you read Johnny? Does shit. it say what it's do- what it does? Well, I'm I'm reading the Defense Department release here today. The defense, the, the Department of Defense announced the United States will pursue a modern variant of the B-61 nuclear gravity bomb, designated B, eh, whatever. Uh, the Department of Energy's natural uh, National Nuclear Security Administration would produce the bomb. The decision to pursue this capability, which was undertaken in close collaboration with the NNSA, responds to the demands of a rapidly evolving security environment. That, that's why we need it, a rapidly evolving security environment. Here's a quote. Uh, Today's announcement is reflective of a changing security environment and growing threats from potential adversaries. This is just a bunch of nothing. Uh, it will be deliverable by modern aircraft, strengthening the deterrence of adversaries and assurance of allies. It's just it'll, be delivered, it'll be delivered by modern aircraft as opposed to uh, vintage <laughs> yeah. aircraft. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but why oh, did they come out the with this right now? This, man. We're going to use the, the newer ones. All right. Yeah. Just so that you know, just so that you, it's like they're just trying to fill fill space. They, they got to make this article like we need another sentence. It's like, yeah, yeah. it'll be delivered by modern aircraft for real. So you stupid. needed to write that down. Thank yeah. God they told me I thought they were going to use fucking the, the Wright brothers. Fucking <laughs> well, you know, they, the, 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 our enemies are using hang gliders now. So, I mean, <laughs> Eddie, you would have been great at newspapers. That's the kind of shit they, they hate at newspapers. When you include bullshit words like that, uh, they, oh, you've got to fill it in, man. Yeah. Just uh, mindless sentences. Just the government, though. Yeah, we would. That it's so funny you say that though, because government press releases were always the worst because of but, shit like that. That kind of language, they love that. They kind just of say language. nothing. They just say a yeah. bunch of nothing. But well, guys, all. don't you realize why we need this gravity bomb? Is because Putin is like, we're gonna drop our nukes on you, and you're like, oh really? You got <laughs> nukes? Well, guess what? We've got a gravity bomb, and it's even worse than a nuke. We'll drop you a nuke. You drop your little nukes. You got your nukes. You got your nukes. We got a gravity bomb. Nukes are so 2000 and late. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nukes are so old. Nobody cares about your stupid ass nukes. Yeah, so um, that's going to be the new thing. Oh, Iran's working on a gravity bomb. You know, yeah, I'm like, that's oh, what's no, going to be. We got to invade them. Fucking Kim Jong-un is working on a gravity bar. That's going to be the new thing. Watch. They're going to move away from nuclear. Yeah. They're gonna try and to and nuclear, nuclear bombs aren't going to be scary anymore. It's going to be. Yeah, because maybe maybe they, they realize we got to bring nuclear power plants back. So we got to make nuclear like a cool word again. Because oh, before nuclear bombs. Before nuclear bombs, nuclear didn't was it didn't have a, like a negative connotation to it. It was nuclear power plant, nuclear power. It just nuclear family. It just it didn't have a bad um, meaning. And then you know after World War II, nuclear became bad. That's why I, that guy Galen Windsor, the guy who who builds and develops nuclear power plants, he was pissed. He goes, why why all of a sudden is nuclear power like dangerous and evil? Like he's like, it's not evil. I, yeah, I, I tell people that plan. all the time, and they just don't get it. Yeah, they, they need, just they need nuclear to be bad. That's why when nuclear power plants blow up, just like coal power plants blow up. When a coal power plant blows up, the people caught in the explosion, they they melt, they burn, they die, and it's horrible, right? But then they rebuild that coal plant, and then it goes on. With nuclear power plants, when they blow up. People melt, people die, people burn. But because it's nuclear, they can't rebuild it and it can't go on. Because if they want to keep that 
fear of nuclear bombs going, uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, a nuclear power plant that exploded. We got to we got to sacrifice that whole city and all the surrounding land just to scare the fuck out of people. So the fear of nuclear bombs is, is still fucking kicking. Have you heard the theory about what what really happened at Chernobyl? I, I, I don't know, but my guess is, it, it, you know, they had a, a, an explosion and then they go, OK, we got to shut down the whole city. No, 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 no. Fucking no. Scare the, the shit out of people. And the, and the Russians are very pissed because when that movie came out and they tried to portray it as the Russian, someone bad at the nuclear plant. The, the belief is, is that the the uh, s- some kind of giant spy ring technology ring was. Yeah, I think he's stuck. Uh, stuck. Going on, uh, Sam. In hey, you froze, buddy. You're gonna oh, have my... to repeat that. Okay, and that basically, I don't know what I'll say from the start. That that basically, the CIA blew it up. Oh, he switched boxes. That's never yeah. happened to me. Yeah. That was bad. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> that is crazy, bro. What happened, dude? My 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 Zoom just went out. And it's never That's happened. Totally normal. That's normal. Not for Sam. Okay. <laughs> they're watching you, Sam. They're, they're watching. <laughs> oh, you know they are. But so I don't know what point of that you got. But you uh, got uh, all we heard was that the CIA did Chernobyl. That was it. Yeah. And so when you get in, so when you look at Chernobyl, right? You're like, okay, so a nuclear or not, some a nuclear reactor went off. And like they make you walk around like hazmat suits. I don't even know if they make you do that anymore. But they they got like vegetation and animals running all around that place. Like yeah, yeah. And they tell you that oh no, but I heard there's three headed squirrels everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they tell you that, but uh, then you hear like hey, it's fucking it's normal. There's, yeah, dude. Elon was on fucker. Elon was on Rogan yesterday. Was talking about how Chernobyl. You can just take tours there now and stuff. It's totally chill. Yeah. You can. And go same on thing with Fuku- Fukushima. Fukushima. I, you know, Ryan Dawson lives in Japan. He said Fukushima's that whole city's fine. People are, are full of shit. It was all bullshit. And that's I what totally I'm saying. I agree when with a, that. When a nuclear power plant blows up, they have to shut the city down because otherwise, wait, don't. Aren't you saying that nuclear energy is like it's going to be uh, contaminating the the water and the the soil for five hundred years and all that shit? Isn't that yeah. why it's bad and so dangerous? So they have no choice but to shut down cities where nuclear power plants uh, explode. So Fukushima, you think you think that you think the at Fukushima there was an actual an actual explosion, but all that extra shit about we gotta not live there and the chemicals are in the water, that was all extra bullshit. I think it's I all think bullshit. It bullshit. I think it was all bullshit. I think it's all bullshit. If that shit was real, we would have a Godzilla by now. There'd be a Godzilla just coming out of the water with all that nuclear radiation. You would love and that fucking people up. You would love yeah. that. I would love that. Hey, so hey speaking of Elon on Joe Rogan, very interesting. Very interesting because the first half of that podcast, I was like, damn. Because the question is, um, Elon Musk was probably controlled opposition, right? So, But the question is, was he con- controlled opposition that knew he was controlled opposition or controlled opposition that didn't know? And it seems like when he says certain shit, like the first half of Joe Rogan's podcast yesterday, it seems like the first half, like, damn. It seems like he might be what like it sounds like he might be the controlled opposition that didn't know he was controlled opposition, which is the most powerful form of uh, controlled opposition. But the problem is if they awaken, then boom, they could turn on you. They're powerful because they don't know it and they believe what they're saying. Uh, and then dude, he was talking a mad shit on George Soros, dog. He was talking mad shit. So I'm like thinking, damn, he's awake. And um he was talking, he was like talking about free speech and why he bought Twitter and all that shit. But then the second half of the, uh, or like the middle of the podcast, he said, you know, you know, what's the difference between um, a scientist who reads a study that was done, a study or an experiment, and just a regular person that reads that study or experiment? Is there a difference? If the guy's smart, he would, he's not a scientist, but he went, you know, he's educated, he's articulate, and he understands science and all that shit. Is there a difference if, a, like, a scientist reads an, an, 
a study and then a, another smart person reads a study. I don't think there's a difference. You're just because well, the I mean, in terminology, you know, the, the scientist that's reading. I mean, you could say, oh, the scientists will understand more. But that scientist was not involved in that study. He did not do that study. He did not participate in that study. He had nothing to do with the study. He's just reading the results that anybody could read. Right. And yeah. uh, and um, I have friends that are scientists. They call themselves scientists. And when they talk, they talk about science. They talk about uh, studies and experiments like they did the experiment, like yeah. like they didn't just read about 100 percent. You know what I mean? You read you just read it. You didn't actually do the experiment. So and a lot of them, they like, oh, you know, we in science, you know, we did this and we we found this out and we found that out. Like, you didn't find shit out. Someone, yeah. someone else supposedly found shit out and they wrote a report about it or they did a study about or, it. Or the, they, most they, people just read the headlines and regurgitate the headlines like they. Yeah, and because and because they're technically a scientist, they say it like they did. It. Yeah. You know what I mean? That they yeah. always do that. They're like, oh, we're so smart. And they're talking about an experiment. And they're talking about something like they did. It. And a lot of scientists say that about like space and shit. They didn't know, like, like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He talks about like the sun being 93 million miles away. He didn't do any experiment. Dude, has before. anyone's taken, a, read that. taken a bigger beating than that guy? You know what I'm saying? But when it comes to Elon Musk, um, he started talking about the... Uh, like Joe asked him why he built his SpaceX rocket uh, plant right at the border of Mexico. It's like in the middle of nowhere. Uh -huh. and, and, and Elon goes, he built it there because, you know, when we launch rockets, we want to be as close to the equator as possible because the earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour at the equator. So we want to be, so that spin, the closer we are to that thousand mile hour spin, because the further, you know, if that was true, if we were really on a ball and it was really spinning, then that would mean the further away you get from the equator, the slower the spin is, mm -hmm. right? Right. If we were on a ball spinning at a thousand miles of the equator, like, you know, I don't know, 2000 miles north of the equator, we might, we might be spinning at, at like, like 500 miles an hour or whatever slow than a thousand thousand is the max is that the equator so he's saying so he's talking about all this core the coriolis effect all this shit that's been proven there's a three-hour documentary on nothing but pilots and military three they're just going off like these people will lose their jobs they're like pilots do pilots do the, the thing going on with pilots get on an airplane and ask a pilot if we're uh, on, on on a flat or they dude most of them they all agree now dog I'm telling you. So, so how did you Elon, hear about uh, Elon, you... Elon? Elon is on Joe Rogan. Like once he started talking about that, like the Coriolis. I mean, so there's been so many military personnel. It's impossible that we're spinning. Pilots, are like it's impossible that we're spinning. If we were spinning a thousand miles an hour at the equator, landing a plane would be fucking super hard. You know what I mean? Yeah, right, like I, right. spinning a thousand miles an hour. That was, yeah. the, Planes don't even fly a thousand miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Planes yeah, fly yeah. like five hundred miles an hour. Yeah. How the yeah. fuck are you gonna land on a fucking airstrip that's spinning a thousand? It's ridiculous. We're motionless, and it's so obvious. So he starts going into that. So it's either so now I'm thinking, okay, I was just thinking he was awakened, or he can still be awakened, but he's caught up in that. I hang out with scientists and whatever is written down by scientists, I memorize it so I can repeat it and sound real smart. So I don't know what it is. Cause at first I was thinking, damn, he's awakened. Listen to him talking mad shit on George Soros. Dude, he was cutting George Soros apart. He says that dude hates mankind. That dude is trying to destroy mankind. He goes, just look at what George Soros is doing. He's destroying mankind. That's what he's doing. He's on a mission. So I'm like, God damn. Elon Musk is legit. And then he starts talking about the Coriolis effect and all that shit. I'm like, oh my God. You know, hopefully he is awakened because I'm hoping he is and that he, you know, and that he's like um, trying to save the world. I hope he is. But man, when he starts fucking regurgitating all that fake space shit, uh, I, I, I wonder, you know, either. Well, I don't you know, know, I know somebody who said that talked to him that says he said he does. He definitely says we never landed on the moon. He says, who says that? That? Elon. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Hey, guys, real quick, I want to tell you about our favorite company ever of all time. That's right. Blue Chip! <laughs> 
<laughs> That's right. Blue Chew, American made company for American boners for American people who want American boners buried in their backyard. Let me tell you about Blue Chew. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in a chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost, okay? You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or whenever an opportunity arises, because she, when she says it's go time, you better go and take no time, okay? You can take them anytime, anywhere. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com. Consult one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So there's no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. BlueChew tablets are made in the USA. USA. And prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Bang. Or with a marching van, fireworks, bald eagles who are rock hard flying around, singing the praises that someone's about to go to. Pound town. Everyone's loving. Pound town. Yeah, let's go. So here's what we need you to do. Blue Chew wants to help you have an have better sex discover your options at bluechew.com chew it and do it and we got special we got a special deal for our listeners try bluechew for free when you use the promo code tinfoil at checkout just pay five dollars that's bluechew.com promo code tinfoil to receive your first month free visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information and we thank bluechew for sponsoring this podcast blue chew enjoy hey guys real quick i want to tell you about this new project i'm working on it's called chaos twins i'm doing with the paranoid american and it is a comic book based on two twin girls who fight crime in their neighborhood and it's my attempt at doing some family friendly entertainment it's a comic book and we're looking for people to sign up and help us if we get enough people to sign up for it we're going to make a bunch of copies and I, I think it's great. It's going to be, if you're into conspiracies and you're looking for family-friendly entertainment that you can read with your children so they can enjoy it, Chaos Twins is it. It's a story about two twin girls who move to a new neighborhood, realize that sums up, and realize they have superpowers. One can transform into a bear, and the other one can transform into any bird they want, and they fight the deep stay in their neighborhood. All you have to do is go to chaostwins.com or thechaostwins.com or even samtripoli.com and and, and uh, click the banner. But go there, click it, and uh, get on the mailing list. And if you can join us, it'd be really great. Uh, we appreciate you. And uh, just check it out, chaostwins.com. Now let's get back to the show. He's hard not to like, though, right? When you see him in that kind of setting, being honest and, and, and just conversing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you that first half of the, that podcast, I'm like, damn. Where, where he talks about it being a death sense. cult, the liberal, the, the modern liberals, the left wing being a death cult. I'm yeah, like, that we've been talking about on this podcast forever. Yeah, um, yeah. Hey, do you Eddie. see that? Oh. I know, I know you're a Browns fan, um, Eddie, but do you see AJ Brown, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, is now a flat earther? Is he really? Yeah, nice. he came I out. Didn't know that. He's been he talking came out. about it. Yeah, didn't even think about that. <laughs> All right, I will. I will. You think I'm afraid, bro? <laughs> hey, Bravo. Who you yeah. got? Elon or Mark? Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg? Oh, if oh, they oh, went oh, down, oh. if it went down. Oh. And then another thing. Once he started, okay. So he he first half of the podcast, I'm like, dude, Elon is legit, dog. Look what he's fucking saying. No way. No way a deep state puppet would be saying this shit about George Soros. No way. And then he starts talking about fucking the Coriolis effect. I'm like, oh, my God. And then and then he goes on and he starts talking about fighting. Like he knows about fighting. Like he, like he says <laughs> he doesn't have to train to beat Mark Zuckerberg. Like he doesn't need to train because he, he, he goes, I weigh 240 pounds. I'm just going to smash him like a walrus. <laughs> and then Joe goes, you don't even need to work your cardio. She goes, I don't need to work on anything. I'm like, dude, he, uh, when he says that, I'm like, okay, okay. He's, he doesn't know everything, Don. I'll tell you that much. He doesn't know everything because if he thinks he doesn't have to train to beat Mark, Mark Zuckerberg's actually training on a regular basis for a couple of years. 
even though he's 150 pounds or whatever, I got my I got my money on Zuckerberg. Anybody who says they don't even need to work on their cardio, oh, dude. and then he says, and then he says, oh, it sounded like you know, as before that podcast, it sounded like like Elon backed out. It didn't sound like Zuckerberg backed out, but on the podcast, Elon saying anywhere, anytime, any rules. Any format, I don't care. I'm down. I don't need to train. I don't need to work on my cardio. I'll fuck him up. I'm he ain't gonna do it. That tells me he doesn't want to do it. He's not gonna so, do so, it. So that he's wrestling. Like, like okay, okay. Uh, do it. He's not. He, he doesn't know everything. He thinks he knows everything. Uh, are you worried about his fight. everything app? Are you worried about that? Fight, so huh? the the, uh, the 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 real black pills on the. Twitter and stuff like that, like Whitney Webb and uh, everybody, uh, they're just talking. And he talks about the Everything app, which is like a, which a lot of people think is going to be like Chinese WhatsApp or what is the Chinese version, Johnny? Is it WhatsApp? Weibo, Weibo, Wei Weibo, Wei Weibo. So, uh, w -E they have a, they have an everything it's app. It's called WeChat, isn't it? Well, I WeChat, think, but... WeChat. There we go. Well, there's and WeChat. What is that? Okay, what, is, what, is or every, Weibo. what is an everything app? And is Elon putting this everything app out? Oh why yeah, he that? talks about it on the podcast. That's why he wants to turn X into the everything app, where it would oh. have your all your where you can do all your banking, all your social media, everything. Right there, dating, face stuff, YouTube, bank, ed, the whole works. Everything on one app. They know Video. Yeah. And by the way, man, he, he got that chick from NBC and we have a friend who, who knows who worked with her said she was great. I think she's, she's re like it. Twitter seems worse than ever at this moment. I mean, it's just not it worse really? than before. It's not worse than before. Like, I don't know, man. It just, you think it's worse like than before? Well, I'm shadow banned again. I mean, I was getting, I had a, I had a tweet get a million views, 3 million views. I can't get more than 40,000 now. Nothing. And that, that's I not, not I mean, that's pretty good. Cool. What? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not nothing. It seems like, it seems like it's a lot better, but it, it's, there's definitely people that are still banned. Like, isn't Alex Jones still banned from it? Is he? Oh, no. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. And what about so what? Uh, Schroyer in jail right now? Yeah, fuck. I like the community note, so and I see a lot more all you know alternate yeah. opinions than I ever did before. But and you know they what, are... Elon? Elon, when he was talking about X on Rogan, he was saying some some powerful shit. He goes, "The um, you wouldn't have a First Amendment if uh, unless uh, you were." Uh, you know, you're talking about accepting, you know, people with different opinions. Like, because if, if you yeah. didn't accept people with different opinions, there wouldn't be a need for a like a First Amendment. The whole reason there's a First Amendment is to, to so that everyone accepts different opinions. Every, you know, and yeah. Twitter before Elon, they were not accepting different opinions. It was the mainstream narrative or you're fucking out. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. How, how, what? I mean, we're still getting shell banned, but somebody said on YouTube, we got, they suggested our video, which is insane. I mean, it's don't just... you, uh, don't you feel like you see more of, uh, the people that we interact with, though, them on Twitter now? Like, I, I, I never saw any of I'm worried that I'm in, people. I'm just in an algorithm right now. It's just showing people that I agree with. And I think that is, I think algorithms are yeah. dangerous. Yeah, I think algorithms are dangerous because it just sends you more of what you want to hear instead of me hearing everybody's side. It's also a lot of blood and guts, man. I mean, there's way more violent content yeah. than I ever saw before. I can't believe how much there is. It's yeah. I mean, we are at war. I mean, we are at war. I mean, they are at war. I mean, it's pretty. I'm not even talking about that, though. I'm talking about like just fights in the streets and, oh, you know, yeah. people, uh, uh, people like I mean like that hockey fight video kept showing up over and over again. Yeah, it's it's I a think lot everybody, of I think everybody has a video account. Everybody's a cameraman now. So all that shit uh was always happening, but now we get to see it more. I oh, think, I I 100% I agree. I'm just saying that's what Twitter's feeding us now. 
Yeah. Like, like uh, before video cameras and phones, like you would never know how fucking um, special or different like people's pets are. Like people say, dude, my cat does this. My dog does this. <laughs> and you're like, no way. I got a cat. Like you would never know. But man, like weird animal videos, like cats doing weird ass shit. You would never believe like, like when cats, there's that, that video of the cat saving the baby from falling down the steps. Are you fucking kidding me? What, what the <laughs> fuck was that? Have you seen this? No. There's a video. There's like some kind of like baby cam captured video of a baby like getting like uh, um, out of the crib and was right at the top step of the staircase and a cat comes and fucking pushes the baby back. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then there's, a, there's another one where a kid, little like two year old toddler is outside. And some fucking dog comes from nowhere to attack the baby, and a cat just comes yeah. out of nowhere, yeah. boom, and yeah. attacks the dog and saves that baby. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Show that one. Look at this baby. Look at the cat. Watch. Cats. Check this out. Look at this. Boom. Look at this. Boom. It's safe, That's baby. so crazy, bro. Look at that shit. <laughs> Dude, what the That's fuck? So crazy. No, no, no. You see, he's like, no, no, no. And no, he's trying no. to grab him by the scruff like he would yeah. do a kitten. You know how they grab him behind the neck like that? That's yeah. what it tries to do at the beginning. That's crazy. Dude, Dude. that just... That's just so amazing. It's, it's just... fucking wonderful. Do you own a cat? Amazing. I have two cats. Oh, you have two cats? Did anyone here know Eddie Bravo was a cat guy? Yeah, yeah. He he's talked about his cats before. He, he I love them. my cats. I have two, but they never see each other. We all either one's in their room locked up, and the other one has the run of the house, and then we switch them. They never see each other because they they'll fight. So, but uh, and they both have just the opposite personality, man. They they do this both want good. love more than anything. They want love and food more than anything, but um. Uh man, they're they're so different their personalities. I love here's, just cuddling with them. Here's that other video you're and talking about. Jeremy Triantafilo was uh, attacked by dog. the neighbor's dog until look at this. Oh, oh shit! The look at this cat. Family Whoa, cat look at that shit. comes Ooh. hurtling out of the home <laughs> to chase <laughs> it away. <laughs> just Dude, extraordinary. Just throws like, Jeremy, his body poor boy, right needed. Anyway. A That's few great. stitches so fast. on his wonderful. leg. Yeah, uh, dude. We love cats. That's wonderful. We need a cat. I need to get a cat. Yeah, cats are... You know, the, the, the great thing about cats is... Um, your dogs... I don't have a dog because they just need too much love. They need... They want love more than food, man. They just... They need your attention more than anything. Uh, cats... They love love, but if you got to take off, you got to do some shit. They're totally cool because my cats, both my cats, when I'm where I'm sitting right now, this is my spot. This is my spot where I sit, and my cat will come in through that door, right there, and will come in. Both of them will come in and look at me and just stay there and look at me. And if I make eye contact with them, they know I want to cuddle. But if I'm on my phone and I ignore them, they just turn back the fuck around mm. and walk away. They come in and check, dude. I'm telling you. They come in and go, you want to fucking cuddle? <laughs> they're down. They're always down. And if I don't, if I'm just on my phone doing shit, they just turn around and fucking take off. One time I was jacking off and the dog <laughs> came and he looked and he's like, okay, maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's a real story. It was <laughs> funny. One of my one of it my favorite funny. Scalar Brothers jokes is about how, like, when people that don't have kids are like, my pet, my dog is like my kid. They're like, no, your dog isn't like a kid. You can't jerk off in front of your, your kids, right? You can't do that. <laughs> yeah, the cats just, they just walk away. They don't want any part of that shit. Yeah, a dog, a dog won't walk away, though. A dog will watch you jerk off till you're done so you can get a pet. You're like, okay, you have a you're weird dog. Me. You have a weird dog. Dude, when I used to use drugs, right? When I used to use drugs, um, 
Man, I mean, my kid, my dog knew I was high, and she would just judge the fuck out of me, bro. She really? just gave me like, "You're a piece of shit. You're it's better not projection. than this." <laughs> oh no, dude, I knew. She knew, dude. When I, I'd be high trying to take her for a walk because she needed a walk. She's like, "I ain't going with you, you fucking <laughs> junkie." <laughs> but anywhere with your ass, she hated me. I, she could sense my vibe, but my energy, for sure, for sure. <laughs> You know, it's crazy. So, uh, Eddie, end of the world. Do you think it's coming? I, I'm going to say 70% World War III. Whoa. Oh, you're at 70%. 70% World War III. Um, it just seems, I don't know. Okay. I don't know if World War III is going to happen, but if it is going to happen, this is how you do it. You fuck around in Ukraine, Russia a little bit. You make uh, Russia look like fucking Hitler uh, or Putin. And then, dude, the fuck? Israel versus the Middle East? That's how you do it. That's World War III. That's Does, where, I mean, that, that, it's been prophesized. So if it doesn't happen, like, you know, thank the Lord. But if it does happen, like, yeah, like we're watching it. And then Taiwan's going to get involved. There's going to be some Taiwan Chinese shit. The Ukraine-Russian thing. Who knows what's going to happen there? And then Israel versus the Middle East. This is how it happens, dog. This is what the Bible was talking about. So hopefully, hopefully Trump gets in and stops this shit. Because he's talking about stopping all this and fixing all this. He's the only one talking about fixing it. Everyone else is saying, fuck a ceasefire. And Netanyahu's saying, fuck a ceasefire? What are you talking about, dog? I mean, everybody, CIA, Mossad, Hamas, Look, here's my cat right here. Look, boom. She wanted to come <laughs> cuddle. Everybody's well, oh, fucking killing innocent civilians. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Everybody. Didn't Obama like drop mad bombs with drones like while he was a weddings? Person? Yeah. He, dr- he droned what? weddings, multiple. And what about Iraq? Didn't like a million civilians get yes. blown up? Yes. Right? What about that shit? Like, you think okay. they forgot about that shit? So, what so, makes World War Three? What makes World War Three? Everybody's killing civilians all over the fucking place. Who started it? I don't know. If you know what, if if Sam, if yeah. someone killed my son, someone murdered my son, and I said, "Come help me murder the guy who murdered my son," you may or may not like be with, me, or you may under you may not want to be involved, but you'll understand, right? They killed my kid. I'm gonna go kill this motherfucker, right? But if you found out later. You were gonna come. You were gonna come help me, and you were like, you know what? I ain't gonna kill nobody, but I'll I'll be the lookout. I'll stay in the car. I'll keep the car running. All right, let's kill this motherfucker that killed your son. And then, uh, but on the way to whack this dude that killed my son, if you found out that I killed his son six months prior or five years before, would you still help me? No. Exactly. You know what I mean? If someone killed my son. I would not kill that person's son. I'll tell you that right now. If someone killed my, slaughtered my son, I would not go after the dude's kids. I would go after him. I yes, would of course. Skid him alive. Of course. And fucking skid him alive and feed him to cockroaches and fucking yes. rats. Bro, that's, and that's brutal. I would make that motherfucker suffer. I'd keep that motherfucker alive, make him suffer, right? But I would, I'll tell you right now, I would not go after anybody's kids. I'm not going to go after any, even if they killed my kid, I'm going to kill the guy who killed my kid. Now, if the kid killed my kid, yeah, I might fuck the kid up. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, That's all I got to say on that subject, man. They, it, the crazy thing is everybody's divided. The left is fucking divided. Wow. That's fucking crazy. Well, you They're know, right. it was like I was saying, it's like you, you want things to go back to normal. Now we got pro pro war people on the right and anti-war people on the left. I mean, like, like I grew well, up. The with. right and the left are split. The right, you know, half of them are with Israel, half of them with Palestine. The left, half are Palestine, half. It's, dude, it's fucking like, what happens now? They're all split and they're all fighting. Everybody's fighting now. I think that was the point. I think the point is keep splitting motherfuckers up as much as possible. And you know what? 
I don't want any fucking part of that, man. I just want to secure our borders. We stay safe. Stay the fuck out of everybody else's business. That's the, like, don't send my kid to fucking war. Fuck that. Just secure our borders. Let's vet people. Let's let good people in, hardworking people in. But criminals, don't let those motherfuckers in. We gotta. We need a vetting process. And don't get involved. Don't be the police of the world. Oh, we're the superpower. We're the superpower. We got a police. Tool. This ain't fucking Team America. Did, go watch Team America right now. Watch Team America. This is not <laughs> Team America, dog. All right, let these people figure it out. They're fighting over Holy Land. You cannot argue with religion. You can't. You can't. It's yeah. religion. Yeah. It's holy, holy yeah. land. Everyone thinks that's, that's Jesus' land. So I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I'm staying the fuck out of it. If you kill children, you should be fucking skinned alive and tortured. That's all I got to say. I don't know what's up. So, okay. So what is your take on Matthew Perry? What do you think of that? My guess is he had a heart attack in this jacuzzi and drowned that's my guess yeah a lot of people want to blame it on the vaccine which i'm not necessarily against i can't rule that out but the word was like he was in awful shape towards well yeah i mean he wrote that book about how he almost died of a heart thing because of his drug use like not what a couple years ago or something like he he was his heart was trash dude like they told him several times he should have been dead i think he did die like or something i mean he had a real struggle you know with with ab drug abuse so i mean let's and not he was super say pro jab yeah i mean like jab. like that doesn't selling help. merch about yeah. it you too. can maybe do one or the other but not both and survive <laughs> a lot of people are dying dog go to instagram at died suddenly worldwide yeah. at died suddenly worldwide follow those people are dying all over the place and you know what's crazy no one knows because it never gets reported. Yeah, um, they they knew that they knew they could fucking kill people with this shit, and it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even be a big deal. Nobody's keeping track. The only one who's keeping track has died suddenly worldwide. They're the only ones keeping track of these people dropping like flies all over the fucking place, all over the entertainment business. People are dropping. Uh, Stephen Riley, drummer for fucking L.A. Guns, used to be a wasp. He's dead right now too. I wouldn't doubt it had something to do with the jab. See, but that's what it is. It's hard to put it on the jab if it's been six months out. You can just blame anything at that point. Oh, no, yeah, he drinks, yeah, exactly. he smokes. Yeah, exactly. But still, but it's, it yeah. gives people blood clots years later is what they're talking about. Yeah. Years later. Yeah, it could, it, it could, it's slow. You know, some people, I mean, this is what the experts were saying. I don't know if they're correct or not. Maybe they're full of shit, but they're going out on a limb and risking their career saying the shit. So I, I tend to believe that they believe, at least they believe in what they're saying. They're saying, like uh, the dude who used to work for Pfizer, I forget his name. He's saying, dude, if you don't die right away, eventually you will. It's going to slowly fucking cause organ failure. Cancer's up like 5,000% or some shit like that. I don't know. Cancer's up like a ridiculous amount, uh, insane amount, just death in general. If people are dying younger. People are dying of heart attacks at, like, in their teens now. Like healthy kids. Kids aren't supposed to have heart attacks. Kids don't have fucking heart attacks. And now they are. Now it's normal. And they're normalizing it. And then... Just like see, autism. Yeah, it's crazy shit, man. Crazy yeah. shit. Yeah. Well, Eddie, it's been a fun conversation. I love that we can do these once in a while. Uh, one oh, more also, time. I just... Also, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I just dropped an album. It's available. It's available on all uh, music platforms. The band is called Hook Thieves. The album is called Jar of Flies. It's kind of an uh, homage to Alice in Chains' Jar of Flies. Well, I called it Jar of Lies. And the cover the cover's like a parody of it, too. Um, just dropped it a couple weeks ago. There it is. I saw the See video, that? Eddie. The video, that video for the Coyote song is, is just... It's it's wonderful, it's so good. Yeah, it it was it was. People don't know um, what that's what I'm trying to say in that song, and I uh, tell I us explain, about the reaction to it. I could explain like the whole that that song. All right, it's it's called El Coyote. It's great, and um, it started off. This is how it started off. I'm always writing joke songs. I've been writing joke songs since I was fucking fifteen. I wrote a song, uh, you know the song by Slayer, Angel of Death? Yeah. I When I was 15, 16, 
I rewrote that song, called it Angel of AIDS. And it was about a chick <laughs> who, was make, who had, she was Angel of AIDS. She was a hooker. And she was, if you fucked her, your balls start to boil and explode. <laughs> so I, I've been doing joke songs forever. I've been um, just super offensive, super dirty, just the most offensive, dirty songs I could come up with. I have a million of them. I never, ever planned on recording them. You know, because, you know, when I make music, I make serious music. I don't want to make like comedy music, but I love comedy. So I'll, I'll like make songs for my friends and I'll send it to five people. And they're so inside. Most people don't even get them. But um, uh, this song, I was uh, hanging out with um, uh, a, a, a musician friend of mine, super liberal. And his girlfriend, super liberal, who's a great singer. And she had a friend over who is also a great singer. These are uh, uh, legit high-level musicians I was hanging out with. Super liberal. They think Trump is Hitler. They think <laughs> Trump is a psychopath, right? These guys, and I tried to talk to them, but I gave up. I'm like, we're not talking about politics no more because you guys are just like, no. They're so far left. It's incredible. Um, so uh, we're all just hanging out in his living room. He lives in a mansion in Hollywood, and I had an acoustic guitar. And I was just playing you know, A minor C, just like the classic chord progression. And I go, what is the most liberal thing I could sing right now off the top of my head? Fuck the wall. Let those Mexicans. You know, so um, that was the first thing. Fuck the wall. Let those Mexicans. And that was the most liberal thing that was coming out of my head. And they loved it. Those girls were singing their asses off to it. I just had that part. Just, just over and over. Fuck the wall. Let those Mexicans in. We were laughing our asses off. Because they know where I'm coming. They know what I meant. They, they know what I meant about it. They know I didn't, like, you know. They didn't know I, they know I believe in a secure border. You know, we just can't have people run. We got to vet people. We gotta let the good people in. Let the hardworking people in. Let the women and the children who are running from oppression. We got room for you. But we got we can't let the criminals in, so we gotta vet you. There's a process. Fucking no brainer. Everybody agrees with that. So obviously, me yelling "fuck the wall" and singing it. Obviously, it's a joke, right? So I like the chorus. It was catchy, and I was like, "Damn, I could okay, I could do something with this." But how am I gonna be able to complete this song without getting just uh, railroaded by yeah. my people? And my people, you know, because if I just have this chorus over and over, fuck the wall, let those Mexicans in, my people are going to think like, like, you know, I joined the Illuminati or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I go, okay, the verses are going to be so crazy, obvious that I'm fucking around. So I made the verses about a child smuggler, like sung through the eyes of a child smuggler. The chorus is fuck the wall, let those Mexicans in. But then the verse is how am I supposed to traffic? How am I supposed to pay my rent? I got 14 chilling. <laughs> I have to move today. And then the second the second verse is, uh, uh, don't make me dig tunnels. Don't make me jump over it. I don't want no more trouble. I just got to move these kids. So it's obvious that it's a <laughs> joke. You imagine a song sung through the eyes of a human trafficker through the southern border with empathy, like having empathy for him. So obviously that's a joke, right? So then it was just the verses in the chorus and I would sing it at parties and stuff and people didn't really understand the verses as much. The, the chorus was so obvious. So I had to explain the song, you know? Uh, but every time I played, I'd explain it because it the, 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 the lyrics weren't that clear in the verse to understand what was really going on. So I go, okay, I got to make it super clear. I'm going to call the song El Coyote because I mean, really the song should have been called Fuck the Wall. But I, I'm trying not to get assassinated here. So <laughs> I go, okay, okay. So I got the verses. They're obviously, it's fucking parody to, to balance out the chorus, which is super liberal. So I called the song El Coyote. So it would be clear it's about a coyote. It's about a human smuggler. And then I go, to make it even more clear, I'm going to start the song off. The intro is going to be saying, Yo soy El Coyote. Not only... Am I telling you what the song's about? I'm singing it in Spanish so people know I'm Mexican. So it gives me a little more leeway. Like, I'm just playing, dog. This is just a joke. Um, so that's that, you know, that's the, the, uh, 
that's what the song's about. So people in the comment section of that music video that we did, um, they, they're like, these, fuck this, you know, <laughs> fuck these lyrics. They don't understand the lyrics. So they go, read the lyrics and eventually you'll get that. I'm just joking. My friends get it. My friends think it's hilarious. And then the music right, video, yeah. I made it re- like confusing. Like there's no message in the music. The music video is like a John Wick movie. They're just it's great. Death. It it's makes so no good. sense on purpose. I, I, that was my storyline. I, I made it so that it was just confusing. Like, what's going on? First, the border <laughs> patrol agents come out, they're dicks, but then they pull out their guns, but they don't shoot nobody. But then, you know, the, it, it, it was clear the, 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 the people that I played, the coyote, and the, the group of people that I was smuggling in, they were from everywhere. We had a black guy, we had a Chinese guy, we had Kurdistan guys, we had Mexican guys, MS 13 guys innocent women and children like the typical ones we had everything so if that 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 video was purposely confusing and really not on the left or on the right like what's going on here but if there is a message at all in the video it's that the people coming through the southern border aren't just mexicans it's fucking everybody yeah, well, that's bro, really the mess. A lot of them are these countries that we might be going to war with in the Middle East. I'm telling you, you can't invade the United States. You can't. <laughs> yeah, but you can. And there's a song. There's a song I wrote in. about. There's a song I wrote about Joe Biden, and the song should be should have been called Joe Biden because it's because it sounds like I'm saying Joe Biden uh, 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 at least you know six times in the song. But you know that you know that uh, you know people say. Uh, Go, uh, what did they say? Uh, 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 something Brandon, like, let's go, Brandon. Go, uh, yeah, let's, let's go, Brandon. go, Brandon. Like, people say, let's go, Brandon, but everyone knows that means fuck Joe Biden, yeah, right? So, in this song, I'm saying Joe Biden, but the song is called Yo Body, Yo Body. So, the song's called Yo Body j- just so that the lyrics don't say Joe Biden anywhere. I don't, you know, I wrote it so that I don't. The album is like, how do I write an album and get my points across without uh, getting killed and without people coming after me? You know what I mean? I got a climate change song. It's a part climate change, part jab song. It's climate change and jab song all together. And if you read the lyrics, it sounds like it sounds like I wrote the song uh, to sell to George Soros or Klaus Schwab. And I joke about it. I go. Either I, I tell people this next song is a, there, uh, there's a bidding war going on for between Klaus Schwab and George Soros. It's called How's the Climate? Because if you read the lyrics, the lyrics is pro climate. It's a pro climate change and pro vaccine, super pro vaccine. But if you know me, you know, I'm fucking around. So it's a way for me to get um, it's kind of it's a, a culture jamming album, kind of like Alex Stein and Alex Stringer. You know how they go to city council yes. and they pretend they're super liberal and they're saying all yes. that shit. That's what this album is. It's like a, it's like if Alex Stein wrote it. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. I think it's great. I'm excited for you, and I think it's hilarious that people get so angry. Oh, dude, the <laughs> comments. Yeah, you. I'm, I'm reading a little bit of the comments. They're not some. They're Mexican, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, I'm saying fuck the wall, dog. I'm saying fuck the wall. That's the message. So, you know. Well, I love it, man. Uh, f- now, is it everywhere or just YouTube? It's everywhere. Apple Music, Spotify, uh, YouTube. It's on every music platform. It's and out. just to know how, uh, you know, we here at Tim Foil Hat, obviously we pulled all of our, our Tim Foil Hat stuff off. There's a guy putting out our show on YouTube. I don't fuck with it because I want nothing to do with it. So yeah. he he's putting it out. Uh, but just so you know that Eddie Bravo has like 255,000 subscribers on YouTube and his new video has like 3000 views. <laughs> I'm super shadow banned. No, super you're beyond. You're, you're so shadow banned. It's yeah, like, not, how many views? Like, there it is. 228,000 yeah. subscribers and it has eight, 8,000. 800 views yeah <laughs> yeah my video and then my my last album the, the last album i put out uh click on that it's called mixed flick of death and devotion i put that out in 2017 that was my last album and that one only that's been out for like six years and that one has eighty six thousand views <laughs> well if you actually study your channel you can watch when they decide to start shutting everything down 
Because you have some videos from like six years ago, seven years ago, who have like 250,000, 500,000. I have have videos with millions of views. The ones I did with Joe Rogan have millions of views. Yeah. With Joe Rogan and Hinata LaRanja, they have like 8 million or I don't know how many million, but a whole shit. Yeah. But as as the tech start to shut down any kind of alternative views, you start to get lit up. 47,000, 57,000, 56,000, 21. That was like seven years ago, though. Now go, now go, go, go. Joe Rogan uh, uh, argues weed. BJJ. Joe Rogan argues weed BJJ. No. No. You're asking him to spell. Yeah. Uh, Joe Rogan. We oh, right there. there. Right 45 million. Yeah. 4.5 4. No, million. And then we got one with 5.5 million. There you go. 8.3 million. Yeah. This is see? the one with Rogan gets his back belt. Yeah. Yeah. That has Look a lot that. of millions. That's, that's a lot of millions. That's, eight that's millions. a lot of millions, bro. <laughs> That's a lot. All right, dude. Well, Eddie, uh, looking forward to seeing you this weekend. It's going to be a great time. This will, uh, tomorrow night, Friday night, and s- Saturday night, grab your tickets now. Grab your tickets if you're in. Uh, so it's Indianapolis, St. Louis. Then I got Bellflower, but keep going. Uh, go down. Then I then Austin and Dallas. So uh, come grab your tickets. They're going to be great times. And I appreciate you, uh, Eddie, coming on. Anything else? That's about it, dog. <laughs> All right, Thank guys. Also, also, go check out uh, go check out chaostwins.com. Help me get my comic book. I'm doing a kid's comic book that de- teaches kids about conspiracies. Uh, it's the Chaos Twins, myself, and Paranoid American. That All those special things the fun should be up very soon so go support yo, that yo that's a great idea dog chaos twins about yeah. is it loosely based on your twins well it, it involves two twin girls let's just say that yeah and they and, and, they move to they, a new neighborhood and each house is a different conspiracy and they battle the forces the deep state dude that's fucking brilliant dude Thank dude, you, that, buddy. That's gonna be that's gonna be huge, dude. I'm telling you, that we're excited. And brilliant. if we make enough, if we if we get enough funding from this GoFund, we're gonna do a, uh, a, a, a a animation. Wait a minute. So what is it right now? It's just a comic book. Right now, it's a comic book, dude. You gotta you gotta make you gotta do it animated, dude. You gotta do cartoons. Well, that's what we want to do. We just gotta get to the right funding of it. And once we get that, I'm gonna start doing some people's podcasts, trying to get the word out, and. Uh, get the word going so we'll see how it goes awesome dude thank you man i appreciate you and i will see you tomorrow actually because we're taking the red eye right Mm yeah so i'll see you tomorrow and we'll hold uh, well tonight this goes out tomorrow so tonight i'll see you tonight then i'll see you in st louis and indianapolis and guys enjoy this uh little about our affiliate programs and enjoy these highlights from my other podcast enjoy Here's a clip from the latest Broken Sim. Uh, Struck by the hypocrisy of the Two more people I, I to hear from. I'm sorry. You, you have a the, chance. Well, the, I'm not sorry. The, the hip, sit down. I, and I know you're not sorry. That's people. the point. The we're hypocrisy of this talk. speech. The I'm hypocrisy of the fact that. Frank what, what do you have? Can you please. Frank Gisha is a leading Make a statement about President Joe Biden's speech. This is a clearly warmongering speech. President Joe Biden is calling for a hundred billion dollars. And everyone's for like, I just wish he'd let her talk. Taiwan and what Ukraine, a scumbag and we're lady. Together and pretend like we're going to rush to World War Three, and we're all just going to let Hillary Rodham Clinton sit here. Right. Okay. I'm yes. sorry. You know, yes. this is not. What, what, this is not no, the way no, to have no, a conversation. That, of course it is with you. Of course it is. You, you, can, you can. Yeah. So I get your right. number so you can be on the clip kill list. Get away from me, right? Please. I don't. I do not believe. I will you. listen to you. Yeah, I will respond. Shut I do up. not believe you. But, right, Respectfully, I do not believe you. Well, and the fact just, of the matter is that the just, American people's voice are what need to be heard. Yeah, because, they are being Because heard. our president is not speaking for the American people, and well, neither are you. Well, that's your opinion. That's your opinion. Yes, that's my but, opinion. But, well, then sit down. We've heard your opinion. Thank you very much. Now we're going to turn to people sit down. who are I'm not going to stop it. I'm not going to stop working on behalf I'm gonna wait of here. human rights. I'm gonna oh, my God, this chick is but crazy. It's not free speech when you this, are disrupting. Yes, 100% it is. This is free speech. This is free speech, everyone. This is free speech. That is not free speech. This is people 
to cr constructing narratives that are openly hypocritical. I'm sorry. You, the, the incredible hypocrisy. You, you know, tell maybe me you John Foster Dulles went with Eleanor Roosevelt to bring this Declaration of the Rights of Man. John Foster Dulles was involved with the CIA. Oh, yeah. Well, well he, you're brilliant in your oh, historical yes. uh, uh, Oh, uh, you, you are garbage. Regime. Dude, oh, this please, is the best. Could you please inform me about the United States okay, involved we are in these going historical to, things? We're going to move right, on to... Ms. Clinton, will you denounce Joe Biden? Will you denounce She's on the front lines. Not just yelling about it. So, Frank, I want to turn to you because... You are from Uganda, and Uganda's 2023 anti-homosexuality act criminalizes LGBT conduct in Uganda. And oh, please. It's please. not about Israel and Palestine. It's not please. about. It's not football. This isn't football. He's great. He's hero. great. Yeah, he goes on like that. He's great. Bit, I, yeah. uh, sleep lightly, bro. Yeah. And yeah. don't yeah. come near me. Yeah. Sleep with one eye open. Yeah. yeah. What don't, was the other person you said? Uh, just look up. Put was up. This recent? Um, yeah. Um, uh, Hillary uh, Heckler uh, I, uh, Epstein's Island. This way. Right yeah, that's got to be Then it. you want somebody who's going to get up every day. Hey, Hillary, why is your husband visiting Epstein Island 26 times? Look how big he is. Yes. What are they yelling? Sheila. Sheila Jackson. That's she's it's a campaign event. <laughs> They're tracking this guy out by his shirt like a yeah, whale. He's getting like a rugged, beast whale. Dude. Is this really necessary? Is this really necessary, guys? Is this really necessary? Okay. Is this really necessary, sir? Hey, is this necessary, officer? You guys are dragging a grown man out. Is this necessary? Seriously, come on. Hey, is this necessary, guys? Yeah. <laughs> It's funny. People, these people used to be so, so, heroes. Truth to so power. So did you hear that they called him anti-Semitic? And that turns out he's Jewish. Who? How is that So Hillary labeled him anti-Semitic because she didn't know who he was. That's so great. And he's Jewish? Yeah. That's so funny. She just, I mean, she'll say anything, won't she? Yeah, I mean, she's gross. She's, she would say anything to get power. Yeah, she's gross. Okay, so I guess we're into the news now. Um. This story is unbelievable. Did you see this? So this is from the Western Journal. Swimming competition permits man 50 to compete against 13-year-old girls, then tries to deny it. A regional swimming competition in Canada, of course. Canada's Canada. losing their, their, their mind. You know why? Because half of that country is white women. And they so... White women are so concerned. Johnny, you got to find this video. Let me read this before you get mad. Was they were in Canada? This competition was allowed, a uh, caught allowing a 50 year old man who claims to be transgender to race against 13 and 14 year old girls. Then tried to deny it happened after a reporter quizzed them over it. The incident occurred on October 20th at Toronto's Markham Pan Am Center during the Richmond Hill Aquatic Center's Fall Classic Swim Meet, in which a swimmer going by the name Melanie Wisehart swam against nine girls who were all between 13 and 14 years old. Melody's age was listed as 50 on the meat program as discovered by the news outlet Rebel News. Uh, here's Now, we got video from this, which is of the reporter uh, catching them lying about it, which is just great. I mean, how do you... This is just... You know what it was, right? All of these people were too afraid to be the one who said no to this person. Right. Because right. of Canada, you know, everybody's got the the sort of Damocles hanging over them right now, you know. It's a thirteen year old girl and I swim with the thirteen year old girls. We base on swimming Canada registration. So if the swimmer register in Swimming Canada reg uh, registration okay. as a female, 
she will be eligible to come down to actually swim in this heat. Hey, guys, real quick, I want to tell you about a couple things you can find on the website, samtriplee.com. It's everything you need, audio, video, all there of all my podcasts across the board. You can also get my dates there. You can also get T-shirts there. We are adding T-shirts all the time. We just added a uh, more DSing, less bombing. I love that one, okay? You, we also got uh, Yahweh or the Highway new shirts Woo! are there. They should be up. It's a great way to support the show. Grab your T-shirts now. I got more magic coming. I also have a uh, mental gymnastics one everyone's going to really like. Listen, if you want to support the show, rockfin.com. $15, you get all my shows across all the boards. We also have Cash Daddies, uh, patreon.com slash Cash Daddies. Great way to make money in these difficult markets. We also have some affiliates. I'm going to hit them out real quick. Uh, if you're looking for gold and silver, a great way to go to Wise Wolf. Click the banner. Uh, brown Hydrogen brown gas. Everyone loves it. Harley Ray, our good friends in Candles and Crystals. You can get a, use the promo code SWARM15. Click that one. And Tim James, who was just on the show, universally loved. You can get a discount on all of his stuff on his website, Chemical Free Body. And then finally, Joel Staley, who's going to help me lose weight and get ready to rock. All those there. Click the banners. Support them. Support us. It's a great way. And all my audio, all my video, again, right there at samtriplee.com. Enjoy the highlights. And now, a highlight from Cash Daddies. I talked to somebody last week who's very knowledgeable about the crypto. Was it, it a man in the mirror? And he says that just buy Bitcoin. He said, don't dick around with anything else. You know, buy a little chain link if you want. But he said, just buy Bitcoin. Because he said, that's really what these big places like BlackRock are focused on. Just Bitcoin, nothing else. That's all I've been doing. It's buying Bitcoin. So he doesn't have, didn't have a lot of faith in just about any of the other cryptos. But, you know, he said Bitcoin is probably going to be solid. going. And we've been saying that on here. Good time to buy it. Absolutely. Congratulations. I'm trying to buy. Johnson, I want to buy more. Give me back my Bitcoin. Give me back my XRP. You can keep everything out else. Just give me back that stuff. Magic Johnson has become the fourth athlete billionaire. Who are fourth. the other ones? Is it LeBron one? LeBron is one. That's right. Ma then, Magic, uh, Magic now, Tiger Woods, and then Michael Jordan. Oh, I thought Ronaldo was too. Christian Ronaldo. I thought he signed a billion not a dollar. Not, he's not not on the. He's not recognized by Forbes. If he is, I, most of you know. I mean, these are guys who made their money. Are they only mostly. recognizing black people? <laughs> uh, former basketball icon Magic Johnson has become the fourth sports star to reach billionaire status with a net worth of one point two billion. He actually made a big chunk of his money early on after he retired from uh, an agreement with Starbucks to put a bunch of Starbucks in black communities, 100 coffee shops in black neighborhoods. He sold those in 2010 for $75 million profit and then used that money plus money from the sale of the Lakers to buy into the Dodgers. And his stake, his 2.3% stake in the Dodgers is now worth $110 million. Dude, that dude, if you read about Magic Johnson, he's one of those dudes, everything he's touched turns to gold. Yeah, and yeah. he's also used as a way that white billionaires want to collect, connect with black youth. They're like, everybody knows Magic, and they bring him in, and he's the. that's what the Washington Redskins have done. They're like, hey, man, look, we got Magic Johnson. He's black with AIDS. We love him. We go deep, homeboy. Aaron, open your mind. From the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hat, Tim foil hat, Tim foil hat.